thing is that today we can take a patient's tumor and determine in a reasonable time frame and at a reasonable cost which genes are abnormal in their particular tumor, which allows us to go to point two and assign the right, among, the right drug among those 800 uh, drugs to the patient, giving them a drug that is designed to counteract the abnormal gene in their particular tumor. We're here with Dr. John Mendelson, who's the president of MD Anderson, uh, the cancer center in Houston, Texas, which is just rated the number one cancer center in America. Is that correct? Right. Fabulous. Congratulations. Thank you. And we're here in Aspen, Colorado, and at the MD Anderson Making Cancer History Symposium. Would that be a good way? That's right. Okay. We've been doing this about a decade. When did, when, why did you start? How did it start? We have a lot of friends and patients here, and they mm -hmm. said, Come on up, we're here in the summer, tell us about what's going on. Right. And we've made more friends. Correct. Uh, and gotten more patients and and uh, educate the public a little bit about prevention. Mm -hmm. So it turned out win-win. Great. So now that you've mentioned prevention, it's one of my favorite topics. Good. Last, last year I was here and I asked you a question. I was a member of the gallery and said, what can people do to, top five things people can do to prevent cancer? And you said, stay fit, lose weight. Well, the first thing is quit smoking. All right. One third of all cancer deaths would disappear if everyone quit smoking in this country. One third. No more genes to clone, no more hospitals. Right. Big deal. Yeah. After that, uh, weight control, exercise. We don't exactly know the mechanisms uh, in terms of biochemistry, but we know that thin people, mm -hmm. people that exercise, get cancer less. Right. And if they get cancer, in many situations, they'll do better with it than a, an overweight person. So the treatment results are, are, are favorable for people who are thin. Right. The and hormones, whatever's going on in your body when you're mm -hmm. overweight, isn't helps cancer. And then uh, I think it's very important to have the checkups that are recommended by mm -hmm. the American Cancer Society. Uh, the PSA test is controversial, mm -hmm. but you should, have, you should have your prostate checked mammograms, mm -hmm. colonoscopies mm -hmm. would cut cancer deaths from colon cancer 50% if we all had colonoscopies because you catch the pre-tumor. Right. It's a polyp but not yet malignant. Right. So, and, uh, and then the smoking is, is of course the most important. Anything on diet? Well, the diet data are not as strong as the mm -hmm. gene data, uh -huh. but it looks like for heart disease and cancer, mm -hmm. a diet with more vegetables mm -hmm. and balanced and not too much, which is the most important, yeah. uh, is there. Now, a lot of people take supplements mm -hmm. and many people don't. And uh, I don't know of any evidence that says that one supplement or another is going to make a huge difference. But uh, the data are still out. We've done a lot of trials trying right. to add selenium and, and things that people thought, well, this works great in animal models, and we haven't been able to see that additions to the diet, if you eat a healthy, balanced mm -hmm. diet. I remember reading, and this brings up another question, but uh, you know, Dr. Argawal yes. and Dr. Kazrock were yes. working on something with, with turmeric right? and the effectiveness of turmeric, especially with, I think, with colon cancer, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Well, uh, the Indians mm -hmm. put a lot of turmeric in their right. diet, and they have a lower incidence of cancer. And Dr. Agarwal has done some fabulous research showing that turmeric uh, gets into cells and changes the expression of some genes that help cause cancer. Mm -hmm. It's not total cause and effect, but increase the risk of cancer. Now they're looking at something else. If you've already got cancer, right. can turning off those genes work? And so far the data are not as exciting as, as we had hoped. but. Mm -hmm. We're still doing the, the research, right. so you can't tell the answer until we finish the trial. Good. Um, this brings up where I found that data was in David Shervin Shriver's book, Anti yes. Cancer. Yes. And obviously, Dr. Shriver just, Shriver Shriver just, just lost passed him. away. What right a now. tragedy. Yeah, I felt like I lost one of my heroes. Yeah. Um, well, he not only is wise and uh, knowledgeable, but he's very articulate and he got the message out yeah. about uh, uh, lifestyle and changing behavior. And now we've lost him recurrence of brain cancer right yeah that's yeah, sad but I mean like like you said his mess he probably carried the torch better than anybody else that I can think of if you can write a bestseller about how to prevent cancer yeah you're doing something right yeah <laughs> <laughs> good yeah um 
I'm trying to think. Oh, I remember seeing you on, I think it was in 2006, introducing Dean Ornish. Yeah. And saying that we're going to have, in addition to a regular oncologist, a surgical oncologist, a radiolo- radiological You've oncologist. You've a great memory, yeah. And then now we're going to see yeah. uh, you know, a lifestyle oncologist right. or behavioral oncologist. Right. Is that in the works still? It's still in the works. So at MD Anderson, when a patient comes in, they, they need a team. Mm-hmm. And we're organized around the team. So if you will, if you walk into the Nellie Conley Breast Center, mm-hmm. which is a floor the size of a soccer field, there's one hello window, and you check in. Mm-hmm. And on that floor are the surgeon and the radiotherapist and the chemotherapist and the mammographer. And not on that floor yet are somebody that counsels you in lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And it's it's not reimbursed well. We're reimbursed yeah. for giving pills. Right. and cutting and doing procedures and x-rays and CAT scans, sitting down and talking to somebody about how to quit smoking or how to improve your diet, we're paid very poorly for or not at all. Mm-hmm. Now, some of the new uh, measures in the uh, Accountable Care Act, the new health legislation, mm-hmm. may help address that, and we hope so. There's, Of course, the main thing in there is the additional uh, health insurance for people that are uninsured in this country. And but we've got a whole lot of to do to cut right. the costs of care and uh, make care more effective and valuable, more efficient. Do you think that's going to change in 2014 when health care is mandatory? or It's got to change. I mean, at MD Anderson, when I gave my State of the Institution address mm-hmm. this year, I challenged us to cut our costs over the next five years 20%. Not because of a particular act or President Obama, mm-hmm. but just because... We're at 17% of the GDP now, Mm -hmm. and there are things we could do if we took accountability for our health and cut back on smoking and live better, and then we've we've got to make the delivery of care more efficient and get electronic medical records that are interoperable so we can transfer information back and forth easier. There's all kinds of things we can do to make the thing more efficient, and we're a very we're, we're an enterprising society, a market mm-hmm. capitalism. Correct. But here's some standardization, not one central health management system, but at least some standardized uh, records, standardized ways to uh, apply for payment, mm-hmm. and um, some, some ways to trim the costs, the overhead costs of right. medical care. And we can do it. We all have to do it together, though. We have to look out for each other. Yeah, yeah. Okay, two questions, and I'm we'll, we'll let you go. We got to talk program. a little bit about the, the molecular biology. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So talk to me about molecular biology. All right. Then. Well, you know, um, the Human Genome Project took ten years and cost three billion dollars to mm-hmm. sequence one genome, and today we can sequence a genome in a week or two for a few thousand dollars, and it's going to get down to less than a week for a thousand dollars. That's that's the cost of a CAT scan. Right. So what's happening? And it isn't just at MD Anderson, but we're going to play a major role in it. We can take a patient's tumor and sequence it in real time mm-hmm. and find out which genes are abnormal. And we know that cancer is caused by uh, defects in right. genes that control cell division. Mm-hmm. And there's 800 drugs in the pipeline from drug companies that target the products of those genes. So we're actually able to now, when we choose therapy for people with cancer, select a drug that's likely to work on their cancer mm-hmm. because that's the gene abnormality they have. It's very specific treatment. Right. And that's something that right now, uh, over half of cancers are cured. Mm-hmm. Two thirds of cancer patients live five years or longer. One third don't. Mm-hmm. It's a half million people a year. At some point in their care, they reach the point where they need access to experimental drugs if they want to try to continue. Right. And we can give the experimental drugs much more rationally now. And we're going to speed up and make less expensive the development of new drugs because we're going to be giving them to the right patient. And maybe they only work in 3% of patients. But if you can pre-screen and find that 3%, you're going to get a huge right. response rate. And that's happening now. There are reports coming out with new drugs. And they get right off to the FDA and they get approved. So are there clinical trials for that now? or There, there are clinical trials for that now. And we're setting up a system where we're screening the tumor. Mm-hmm. And we have, let's say, a list of 20 different experimental drugs. Mm-hmm. And depending on which gene is abnormal in that patient's tumor, we'll slot them in to the right experimental drug. And in the past, when we gave experimental drugs, we just took end-stage cancer patients and randomly assigned them. And we are seeing the the response rate in one study we've just completed, it went up fourfold. Wow. So this is progress. Now, have we hit the home run? Are we curing cancers that were were Mm end-stage? Not yet. We're probably going to have to combine two drugs and three drugs. Mm -hmm. There's more work to be done. 
but we, we understand how to think about it. And right. I think we're playing with something that is, is very complicated, but I think we can see a light at the end of the tunnel now of rational, uh, personalized therapy mm -hmm. based on what's wrong with that patient's cancer. So it's a real but lock and key fit. Yeah, but the best thing, of course, is if we prevented it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so parting question or parting thought is, sure. what would you advise folks that are going to watch this video? What can they, what's, what are they can do to prevent cancer? Uh, a healthy lifestyle, mm -hmm. which we talked about, right. and uh, getting the, the American Cancer Society recommended checkups. We all mm -hmm. recommend them, but mm -hmm. they publicize them, right. uh, starting at age 40 or 50, depending on mm -hmm. what we're looking at, and, and being rigorous about it. And, you know, 25% of our country is pathologically obese, right. and that's going to increase heart disease, hypertension, diabetes, and cancer. And those four account for half the admissions in our hospitals. Right. I mean, we're suiciding ourselves uh, personally and financially. Right. So uh, let's pay attention and let's accept responsibility for our own health and not wait until we're sick and then we want, we want medical care. Right. That's my message. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. All right. Yeah.